Oh, bother. <laughs>Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the channel. Man, do I have a different kind of showcase for all of you today. Total War Pharaoh Dynasties will be launching tomorrow, and Creative Assembly has deemed me fit to, uh, to show you guys some early access from the campaign itself. Now, with that being said, guys, I am looking very forward to uh, sharing some more with you guys. I know that I've been away for quite some time, but as I've said before, it is my busy season at work. I barely have time to play games at all, much less uh, record them and edit them and get them out to you guys. Thankfully, that is coming to an end right around the same time that this is coming out. So hopefully we can get some more showcases in and uh, get some more Warhammer in as well. But today is going to be all about Total War Pharaoh Dynasties Edition, and boy, if that's not a mouthful, but it's worth it because it is a really cool game. Now, I just mentioned how I don't have time to really play, but I have put almost 20 hours into this game over just the weekend, and guys, I don't have off on weekends, if that tells you anything. That being said, today we're going to be jumping in with Agamemnon. We're going to check out some of his campaign features, what really sets him apart, and then uh, talk about some other stuff going on with this game as well. I guess this will be kind of a showcase slash review. Um, I'm not going to do like an official review. There are plenty of people you can go watch for that. But if you just want to get my opinion on some of the new changes, then definitely stick around. Now. Let's actually check out the different uh, the, the different factions. So as you remember, or if you played at all, uh, originally this game only had eight factions, which if you played Total War Warhammer, not really that big of a deal. But also having played Total War Warhammer, or at least watched me play Total War Warhammer, uh, you know that that just doesn't work for me. So <laughs> eight factions is never enough. Um, especially when you don't even like half of them. Like Talsret, couldn't care less. Uh, Eminus, couldn't care less. Uh, Karunta, don't even like the guy. And then Bay is just a Canaanite cosplaying as an Egyptian. Didn't love it. Now, when they introduced the Sea Peoples, I did like that. I felt like that was a really good addition. And honestly, I would have been cool if they would have just... Not minor factions, jumping ahead a little bit. If they would have just added another four factions, being the Aegeans, or being the uh, the Mycenaeans, the Trojans, the, uh, oh gosh, the Assyrians and the Babylonians. I would have been just fine with that. And honestly, I wouldn't have had any complaints. However, they went a step beyond that. They brought not two, but seven Aegean factions, right? seven Mesopotamian factions, an additional five Canaanites, an additional five uh, Hatti, uh, uh, Hattians? I'm not sure how you, how, what, what the uh, plural is for that. Anyway, and then another five Egyptians. And you don't have to play as just an Egyptian. You can play as one like Merneptah or, or Ramsey's father over here, or you can play as the Kushites. You can play as the Libu nomads, right? Um, heading over to Mesopotamia, you can play as the actual Assyrians whose empire is, or whose dominance, excuse me, is starting to crumble. You can head over to the Aegean. You can play as Odysseus. You can play as Achilles. You can play as Sarpedon. You can play as Rhesus. And he's not even Aegean. He's Thracian, but that's cool. I love it. And you can play as Ajax. Uh, and you can play as a bunch of Canaanites and, uh, Hattians as well. I'm not that interested in those guys. Um... Especially because if I was going to play as a Canaanite faction, I would want to play as Jerusalem. Um, just because I think that they could be like really fun and unique and different. And I mean, who doesn't want to get a little biblical sometimes? Now, before we bring the glory to Mycenae, let's talk about the campaign customization options. So, if you've never played Total War Pharaoh, well then you probably don't know about this. So I'll just go ahead and run this, uh, run through this with you real quick. So there are going to be all kinds of options that you can start with from the beginning. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but just some highlights. If you want to 
be able to see the entire world, well, you can have the entire playable area revealed to you. Uh, the Fog of War is still going to be active, so you won't be able to see everything that's going on all the time, but you will be able to see the map. And, you know, that makes sense. Um, if you want to have... Here, I'll turn that back off, actually. Uh, if you <laughs> if you want to have um, all the ancient legacies available to you, you can do that. If you want to have immortal leaders, you can do that. My favorite right now is going to be turns per year. Uh, so I'm going to set mine to six. I don't think that every turn needs to be a month, but two months, that that's, uh, that's reasonable to me. And then you can also have, and where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, you can change your player recruitment capacity and you can change the size of armies. So if you're like me and you like to have a lot of characters and you're less interested in the armies themselves, well, then you can have low, uh, low armies and that will restrict you to only 10 units per army. That way you can have, you know, the entire Trojan, uh, the entire, uh, Trojan war gang running around together without completely, uh, collapsing your, uh, military budget. And then let's see what else we can get going. Really, it's just, <laughs> there's so many options. I can't go through them all, guys. But there's going to be battle options. There's going to be AI options. You can make them harder, uh, more punishing, or you can make them uh, easier to defeat, whichever you feel. And then you're going to have your general ones. That's going to be the, the, the stuff that's usually in a total war, except for time of day. That's going to be that, uh, well, do you want the day to cycle? Do you want it to always be afternoon? Do you want it to always be night? Uh, however you want it. You can literally have it set to real time. So whatever time it is on your computer is what time it's going to be in your game, which is pretty cool. Uh, advice frequency, we're going to turn that back to minimal. And then there we go. So we are ready to bring that glory to Mycenae with Agamemnon. So let's get into it. Uh, we're going to start out, you know, see what the campaign's like at the beginning. We'll skip a few turns and then see where we pick things up. So let's bring that glory to my snake for the third time. And we'll skip this video. I'll let you guys watch it if you want to. The great green cradles, once magnificent... And I'll muscles. let him talk to you guys when you play. I'm not going to spoil that for you. But here we go. We've got the faction summary. So this is going to be a window for every faction that you can play with. Um, and they're going to basically tell you what all these different things are, right? And they're also going to tell you some advice or what's unique to your faction, right? So unique to your faction is Agamemnon. Uh, the titles grant bonuses to smaller armies with high tier units, lowering their upkeep and increasing their movement and damage in combat. So you're going to want to have, uh, with Agamemnon, a lot of smaller armies that work in chorus with each other. Uh, you're going to have native units. Um, you're going to be able to get the Achean Hillmen and Achean Javelinmen. Uh, for worship, you're going to want to stick with Zeus. Zeus is your guy. Doesn't mean you can't worship the other ones but he is going to be your primary for your outposts. Uh, you're going to want to build shrines to Zeus to increase your influence. And then let's see, we've got dynasty and we'll talk about dynasty later. Uh, it it's great. It's not quite as perfect as I had imagined it was going to be, but we'll talk about that a little bit. And then ancient legacy, we're going to want to go with Atreus and we'll talk about exactly why when we get there. So let's start with uh, Royal Decrees. So that's going to be your research tree. Uh, for research, your tree is going to be different than the other factions, or excuse me, the other cultures. I don't know if this is different from the Trojan one. I imagine it's not, but I will, uh, when we play Troy, uh, or when we play with the Trojans, I will uh, take, a, take a look at that. For Agamemnon, I'm going to say you're going to want to go for that XP per turn 
but of course that's really going to be whatever you want to there's also valor of the pious which is going to get you a plus 50 percent legitimacy from battles and you oh, i'm sorry you've already got that uh and then you know more food more uh more replenishment that's going to be a good one that you're going to want um shielded by the gods just all kinds of stuff now as far as diplomacy goes you're going to from the start of the game be able to make contact with ithaca who you have a Odysseus of uh, ithaca. barter agreement with and a non-aggression pact you're going to also have a I barter agreement tanks. with the uh with the arcadians something that we're going to have to address here later down the road and then we will win uh we've got a non-aggression pact already with Esther of pylos and again that's just something that we're going to want to keep an eye on uh, My reputation as well endures. as achilles now achilles is someone that we want to bring into our uh br well we're, we're gonna want to bring him uh under us maybe even uh have maybe even have some familial relations with him not sure exactly uh what we're gonna do with him just yet but just something to keep in mind the trojans are going to be across the sea here they start pretty unfriendly with us uh on obviously that's just going to be something that trojans and trojans and mycenaeans aren't meant to get along although if you want to uh play a co-op campaign i can't think of a better pair to co-op with supreme warrior of the aegean now as far as the actual campaign start you're going to be starting King with two Agamemnon. armies not just one you're going to have uh agamemnon and his brother menelaus now unfortunately menelaus up. is not going to be in the ruling family tree it's just going to be agamemnon his wife his, his two children i believe that's the little girl that he sacrificed uh to <laughs> to zeus uh or maybe poseidon like to uh get over to troy in the uh in the iliad which is you know that's sad and, and uh, i don't think we're going to be sacrificing our children but just you know fun little Wide historical or a historical king. fact now the first thing you're going to be able to that do or the first thing you're going to want to do excuse me is attack the corinthians they start off stronger than you militarily you do start off stronger than them however civically so you're going to have there we go. I was like, where did that city go? Uh, you're going to have four settlements starting the game, which is pretty cool. It's going to be more of that old school historical uh, style start opposed to uh, opposed to Troy, opposed to Three Kingdoms, opposed to Total War Warhammer. You're going to not be in that single settlement starting position. You are a power on the field. And that's going to be most the of the starts of in this war. game. Everyone, uh, or mostly everyone, is going to have a pretty powerful start. So, speaking no of power, let's slide. get into our first battle. And, uh, you know, give the Corinthians a piece of our mind. Now, when it comes to battles, uh, you're going to be able to wait out the weather forecast if you want to. Personally, that's not something that I like to do. I'm all about whatever the uh, game's going to throw at me. Let's do it. It makes it more interesting. And guys, I'm not. Uh, I <laughs> I don't really intend to have the. Uh, uh, we're not going to be able to approach from a good position on this. But anyway. Uh, I don't really intend to do the cinematic battles for these. If you would prefer that I do it that way, I can switch it up. But I like to be able to talk about the battles as we play through them. Um, maybe on an actual campaign, we'll do that. Awaiting orders. Awaiting orders. Hungry for war. Trained and ready. Advance, man! 
Now, as we make our approach, there's going to be some things that you want to keep in mind that are going to be a, a little bit different than Total War Warhammer. For one thing, you are going to want to pay attention to uh, your unit's exhaustion levels because that is going to genuinely make them uh, less... I don't want to say less active, le <laughs> less uh, effective, there we go, in the field. Um, you're going to want to actually pay attention to the different kind of units. There's not going to be any kind of monsters, no magic, no single entities running around to carry the day for you. You're going to want to actually play strategically. And for those who play Total War, uh, you probably already know that, right? Uh, but I want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Oh, and speaking of, here we go. I <laughs> got a little bit distracted there. Oh, I hit slow. There we go. I was like, well, why are my guys going so slow? There we go. And we got a little bit too close into their range, but that's okay. And it looks like we were, in fact, cut off in the tree line over here. I don't know why that likes to stick there. Masters of War! And this battle could definitely swing either way. And that to me is something that's really great about this game. Is, you know, you don't... Uh, when you're a mediocre player like myself, <laughs> you don't feel like you've just got every battle in the bag. The units are going to be a lot more close in uh, ability and scale. Repeat his looming! 
attack! I can smell your fear. I should cut out your tongue! For my CD! We work through! Victory! Thank the gods! Break out the good one! All right, and we'll close it out there. Victory feast. Make them our slaves. All right, and there we go. Very good. Now that leaves Corinth wide open to us. King although Agamemnon. I imagine their uh, their king would have something else to say about that. Supreme warrior of that the being YouTube. said, let's go ahead and All move on that. in against Corinth. Obviously, that's not going to be in our favor, so we'll bring he in our brother. Orphan their offspring. Oh, and that is going to put us in a little bit of a pickle, but I think that it's worth it. A great day for Mycenae. Because what we can do is sack it, right? Leave nothing of value. They're Move not going to have now. anything to recover on with, the and they're only going to have that those seven units there. So, what we'll Power do and glory. is recruit some young spears and get some more uh, different kinds of recruitment going as well. Unfortunately, we can't get the target yard right now. But what we can do is go ahead and build a proving ground that's going to increase our military recruitment capacity right out the gate now something else that i want to talk about is going back into diplomacy so we've got two larger powers that aren't um Lord well they're not of super Samus. favorable of us right uh or they're not at least friendly with us yet That's going to be the Boatoans, or the Boatians, excuse me, and the Great Aeolians Achilles. under Achilles. Now, of course, we're going to want Achilles around, so we're going to negotiate with him. Yes. We're going to Why not? ask him for a non-aggression pact. And to secure that, I am going to offer him Helen. Right? Now, is that a big boon to him? Not really. But Menelaus didn't do anything with her. So, let's do it. And that is going to buy us that non-aggression pact. So, we'll, uh, we can also get a little bit extra from him. Let's say, maybe some gold? Is this a single barter? Yeah, I think so. No. Even better. He'll give us 12 gold per turn for uh, for five turns and he'll get Helen, which is only a troublemaker for us. And uh, there we go. Naturally. And now we're on friendly terms with him. Uh, we, <laughs> we we gave him a, we gave him a wife. We gave him a treaty. And uh, now he has a, a, an even bigger boost to us. And that's something that's going to come in handy later. There we go. And that's where I'm going to leave things for right now. We'll pick things back up later 
uh, as we unlock some more of our abilities. So, I'll see you there. Now, as we pick things up later down the road, we are now on turn 9, you can see that things are a little bit different. Corinth is in our hands, and we have moved against the city of Aegeon under the uh, leadership of, oh gosh, what, what is their name again? Um, oh gosh, there we go, the Arcadians. And with that having been done, we're also at war with Athens, who decided we were being a little bit too warmongery. Fortunately, they haven't come down into our peninsula yet, but that's something we'll just have to keep an eye on. What is more interesting is the fact that we now have an ancient legacy to choose. So, we can either go down the path of Atreus, the first Wainax, or we can go down Perseus the Hero. Now, Perseus is going to be more of a Trojan uh, style Let's Play, or maybe Odysseus. So we're going to go down Atreus. Now, as you can see, Atreus is going to have the ability to uh, complete objectives against the enemy factions to gain dominance. That dominance can then be used to accumulate uh, more power diplomatically at court and in the struggle for the crown and then we'll be able to uh, swing things in our favor by basically being a bully. Now, Perseus, well, actually, we'll come back to Perseus when we do our Trojan Let's Play, or our Trojan playthrough, excuse me. So we're going to confirm that ancient legacy, and as you can see, we're going to start with 50 dominance. Now, we have two sets of objectives that we can fulfill. We have the Athenian objectives, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then we have the Arcadians. Now, the Arcadians, we're going to have several different things that we can do basically at once. Um, we're going to defeat their leader, their faction leader, excuse me. We're going to conquer their capital. We're going to raid them for resources. And we're going to raise their outpost. Now, raising that outpost is going to get us 100, 100 uh, dominance points, which is pretty fantastic. And then we can use those dominance points in, uh, well, to, to gain more power. Always steadfast. So, like I said, we can go ahead and raise that. We're going to probably wait. King Agamemnon but not with Agamemnon. So <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna go raise this real quick. Goodbye. And that just gave us a hundred more dominance. Now let's talk about what we can do with that dominance. We're going to, oh, look at that. Oh no, that's, that's for Athens. I keep getting confused. So we've raised the outpost uh, that gave us a hundred dominance and we can use that dominance here. So let's go to our diplomacy Who would we like to use that dominance on? When well, the words what dominance is going to do is going to increase the likelihood matter. of success of a deal by 25 So if I wanted to for example bring Odysseus under myself well, I could do that by uh well, not, not confederating. Confederating is a different story. But what I could do is, say, force him into a military alliance by bullying him. But let's see, who's going to be more beneficial to me? State your offer. These guys would probably be more beneficial, but I can't bring them in because we're... Uh, I, I guess we're not on great terms. <laughs> I wish that we were on better terms. Um, but we'll work on that. But seeing as how we started by uh, reaching out to Achilles, let's reach Achilles! out to him again. So we're going to negotiate with him. To be reckoned with. Oh, he already wants a military alliance? Cool. So we'll go ahead and uh, balance that out. I'd rather you give me more gold, bud. How's that? How's that ring your bell? Not very well. Not very well indeed. What if I just did a... No, you know what? That's fine. Whatever. It doesn't matter. They can give single barter of 50 bronze. 
So let's do... What are we hurting on? Food. Not a single barter. Let's do a set barter. There we go. Is it going to save us on food? No. But it'd be pretty close. So, let's do that. Works for me. Now let's bully somebody <laughs> because that that wasn't what I was trying to do, but I might as well. Uh, let's bully somebody. Let's bully the Born Pylos. I was wondering when you would seek me out. Okay, so I guess we are going to bully um, Ithaca into Odysseus an alliance. The cunning. When the words are honest and true, the past does not matter. So there we go. We're going to use our dominance on him. It will cost us a hundred dominance. All we had to do was burn a, uh, what was, was raise a tower to get that 100 dominance. So I see this is a pretty solid trade. We're going to do that and we could request military access and see what, uh, it would take to make that work. He wants a whole lot for that. So we're not going to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and, uh, oh, there we go, and propose this offer. We're going to take some more from him as well. Let's balance that deal. Let's take more food from you. We're going to increase that to 10. There we go. Close enough. Immediately. And now we have Ithaca on our side as well. And you can see how quickly you can really start to gain that coalition, right? That coalition that went to war against Troy. We've got Pylos uh, that we will also bully later down the road. But now we've got two solid allies in the form of Ithaca and Aeolia. The and that's just the war. beginning of the war. So let's um, let's pick things back up a little bit down the road and we'll go ahead and close this out after the fact. Now, coming back in, you can see that a couple of different things happen. The Athenians have made their move. Uh, they're pushing into our territory, raiding it, if you will. And then we have then moved in, well, to reinforce our Aegean fort and lock down this area. So what Not we're going to do on. is give him a bunch of our cheap troops, right? Or our cheaper troops. And that way he has an easier time holding this territory. So we're going to accept that. Oh. Yeah. Why is it not? Oh, you can only have 10. That's right. I forgot about that. So <laughs> we'll, we'll keep a couple of them. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, let's, I guess, keep our spears. And we'll just give you our swords. And that's good enough. What I see, I owe. Now, as you can see, that uh, decreased our uh, our deficit that we were having, but not quite enough. So what we're going to do is jump into the court. That's diplomacy. We're going to jump into the court. There we go. And Should start to utilize some of our special abilities. The so of my part, court. part of having the Aegean Hecatus is being able to decrease the cost of your troops. So if you want axe units and spear units, for example, to be cheaper, all you have to do is apply that. And actually, let's not do axe units and spear units. Let's do spear units and javelins because we don't have that many axes. So we'll do that. And that will give us a discount on our troops. And I think it takes 
place next turn. So we'll have to double Let check my on that. Enemies beware. And of course, like I said, we've got uh we've got this fort to really hold down this part of the peninsula. But we're also going to start moving Menelaus on up so that he can reinforce and then we can take Athens down. Warriors flock to a worthy cause. Now, since we've looked at the court, we've looked at the uh, we've we've looked at our uh, royal tradition. Let's finish off by looking at the power of the crown. So as you can see, Priam is going to be the Wanax. The uh, the heir is going to be Hector or uh, Scion, I think is what they call it in this game. And we actually are in a good position to contest the crown. So if we want to contest the crown, all we have to do is challenge the current pharaoh, which in this case is the Wanax, not the pharaoh. Um, hopefully they fix that. Um, but if not, I don't. It's it's not really hurting anything. So what we can do is contest the crown, and we don't actually have to physically fight the Trojans. All we have to do is be better than them. So we can contest it. Peace is a delicate balance. But when brothers turn against each other. Virtues are abandoned. Bloodshed is inevitable. And so the civil war has begun. So as you can see, the, the court doesn't really change, but we are in a civil war. To work together. And then for the next 12 turns, we will be at war with the Trojans. And uh, I believe that we're at war with, let's see who else we're at war with. Are we also at war with Nasus? No? I'm guessing not. But as many of them who want to participate can. And like I said, we don't have to physically fight the Trojans. We, of course, can. We can go across the sea and physically fight them. But this is a Game of Thrones. So all we have to do is continue to dominate our own peninsula. And then we can be the Wainax. And we can decide who gets to be in what positions, so on and so forth. So that's going to really be it for this campaign um, guys let me know if you want me to continue this campaign I can definitely do that but I'd like to uh, get as many of these in as possible so uh, to all my friends wherever you are good morning good evening and good night I'll catch you later and once again thank you to creative assembly for allowing me to uh, have early access to this game it's definitely been a blast so far, and I'm looking forward to continuing. Later, guys.